Uh, I wanted to begin with some questions for you, Ms. Lassiter. I'm trying to understand uh, the really the impact of this chemical. Uh, when I was growing up in Oregon, we never saw raptors. I mean, the hawks disappeared, the eagles disappeared, the osprey disappeared. I mean, I say disappeared, I never saw them. And now they're abundant. And the cause was a particular uh, pesticide, DDT, which caused the shells of the eggs to be so weak that they'd get crushed. What is the death mechanism here? What is this chemical doing to the fish that is killing them? Is it interfering with their brain? Is it causing liver disease? What's, it, what's, what's going on? Thank you for that question, Senator. As you know, we just in 2020 discovered that 6-PPDQ is so toxic to coho salmon and other fish. And so we are still learning. We are conducting research in Washington. We are funding research at other agencies like USGS to, to study fish and to figure out what's happening with them. Um, we have a number of agencies doing looking into fish tissue studies um, to get a closer look at what's happening in the fish themselves. Um, but we are working toward ex developing monitoring now. So we just in short, we don't really know yet. That's right. Okay. That's right. Yeah. So is it, are we finding that it's toxic to uh, eggs, uh, the fish eggs? We don't know that yet either. Is it toxic only to adult fish or to also to the small fry? It seems to be toxic to returning salmon. So it's pre-spawn mortality. So they're coming back in the streams to spawn, and that's when we see the mass mortality events. And they're dying before they spawn. Correct. Well, uh, that would have a big uh, impact. So in the Washington State area where you have the streams running into uh, ocean inlets and so forth and saltwater, are we finding that it's also killing the salmon? Because I, I saw a reference to the impact on the orcas. Mm -hmm. uh, is it also uh, affecting the adult fish when they're still in ocean water? We don't know that yet. The, what we've seen is where they're dying um, in mass quantities where they're coming back to spawn, and there are hot spots um, that we're still identifying, but often in urban streams. So when it comes to salmon, I keep hearing the coho mentioned, but we have many types of salmon. Uh, what about other types of salmon? So we know that there's impacts to other fish like rainbow trout, um, but the, the instant mortality, the, the within hours of, um, from exposure, that's specifically coho salmon. The impact isn't the same on other salmon like Chinook, which, as you know, hmm. are the primary food source for our resident orca whales. Okay. So a lot to be, to be learned in right. terms of what is the yes. mechanism that's killing them and, and what other fish are affected, but you do not think it's as having the same impact on Chinook. That's right. That's really interesting, but uh, uh, for another moment. Uh, Ms. Norberg, when this chemical was introduced to affect the oxygenation deterioration, did it, I, I think I saw a reference somewhere to it increases the uh, wear by about 20%. Did, 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 is that accurate? Or how would you characterize the uh, extension of life the, of the tire? Yeah, in general terms, it's at least, uh, tires are lasting at least two-thirds longer than, than they would without 6-PPD. Before 6-PPD was... Uh, became widespread in its use. Um, other waxes were used uh, to protect the tire, and they don't protect the tire from dynamic um, uh, wear and ozone exposure. So uh, crudely, are we talking about a tire that without 6PVD, with 6PVD is a 50,000-mile tire, and it becomes a 30,000-mile tire? I think it would be much more severe than that. Well, yeah. 30,000 to 50,000 would be a two-thirds increase of 20,000 on top. That's one. I'm, tr I'm trying to get a general characteristic we can just put our hands around. Yeah, maybe, I mean, maybe the best way to say is that a tire would last uh, a third as long, right? So one um, third typically, one yeah, third so I may long. have misspoke, yeah. So typically a tire now, um, 
an average lifespan of a tire is somewhere in the 40,000 range, mile range, and we would expect a tire to last, you know, a third of that time at, um, at, on the outside. Yeah, it's a dramatic, dramatic Yeah, it's, it's very dramatic. Uh, for, for sure. <laughs> yes. And I really uh, appreciate the cooperation of the tire industry in, in uh, uh, tackling this challenge, because not every industry says, yes, we recognize it's an issue and we want to be partners in trying to find a solution. So that's uh, 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 very, very helpful. So as I understand it, you presented like there were 70 chemicals or so that were being analyzed and now it's, or that ballpark, 60 or 70, uh, and now uh, seven of those have, are promising. Do those seven chemicals, do we know that they would, do not have the same lethal impact on trout and coho that 6-PPD has, or 6-PPD-Q? So in the alternatives analysis that we are conducting, we have identified that uh, understanding toxicity to coho and other salmonids is really critical to identifying an alternative. The seven, material, the seven materials that we've moved forward to stage two have met our initial screening for hazard criteria, but we have not fully evaluated all of those chemicals uh, for sensitivity to, to coho and other salmonids, and that will be part of the stage two analysis. Not only for those seven chemicals, but beyond that as we get more uh, toxicity and hazard data for other chemicals, we may be evaluating additional materials as we move forward. Okay. So my time's expired, so I'm going to turn this over to our co-chair, and then I'll have some additional questions. Thank you.